great to be back out here. You know, uh, from that last game in November, now is a long time. And so uh, to get a chance to be around the guys again, see how excited they are for this year and how excited our coaches are, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've got great attitudes, but you're always going to have that first couple days of camp. Uh, the nice thing is being year two, we've got a lot of guys with some, some mental carryover and having most of our staff back. Uh, it's, it's, it's really advantageous that second year, and we expect to take that next step. Uh, there, there's pressure on us to, to get better, and there ought to be. Uh, talk a little about how, uh, how getting getting Carr out there uh, yesterday, how that came about. Uh, Wilcox said, yeah, it's pretty much just, hey, want to come? Sure, all right, let's go. Yeah, no, I'll tell you what, there, there's no classier guy than Derek Carr. And uh, obviously having a relationship back from our, our days at Fresno State, um, we were looking to, to have somebody who's got some stroke with the player, somebody who they see as, as a guy who's done it. And obviously Derek's one of those guys. We, we talk to our guys all the time about nutrition, taking care of your body, doing the little things. Uh, and when it's coming from me, sometimes it, it it's like a parent talking after a while. And you know, my, my, my son, <laughs> daughter, <laughs> exactly. They don't, they don't always listen. But when a guy who's actually done it at, at the level that he's done it at uh, talks to them about how it's affected his performance, they listen a lot more. And uh, he gave them a great message about mastering little things, doing the little things that not everybody will do. And uh, when you do that, you got a chance to maximize what you have. It may not be good enough to play in the National Football League, but it'll maximize what you have, and, and that's all you can ask for. How's uh, switching switching to the other side of, of, of the linebacker equation been for you? Uh, I, I like it. I, I played this position uh, back in the day, and I've coached the outside before. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've got a good group of guys. I, I'm excited about the guys we have coming back. And uh, uh, you know, having Peter come in, He's really a knowledgeable inside linebacker. I mean, he's played it for a long time. He's been in this system. Uh, and so he's a great resource to our staff as we put the whole thing together. It's kind of an interesting thing with a couple of practices and then the spring break. What do you tell the guys? Do you tell them to get away from football or just stay in the, the, the book a little bit and keep their minds in it a little bit? Or? Well, again, I think our guys uh, love football. When we, when we, we gave them you know, maybe 70% of what we did in the fall uh, in two days. Now, the new guys, they're swimming. Sure. Uh, but the older guys, it, it was a great review. We, we, we had some meetings before uh, this week anyway. So we've got a pretty good base. Uh, they're going to go away. We don't want them getting too bad of shape. But we'll come back. We'll condition that Monday. We'll have recovery day Tuesday, and we'll get cranked back up with a no-pad day on Wednesday. So uh, it's great to you know, kind of just reintroduce uh, the package, get guys running around, uh, you know, see who's made some improvement from the, from the offseason. And you know we'll, we'll be excited when we get pads on because it'll be real football then. Some of the guys mentioned on, on Monday, uh, kind of what you were talking about the carryover from, mm -hmm. from last spring to this spring. Is it is that obvious even though oh, they don't have pads out here? Yeah, it's yeah. not it's not close. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that first day we were able to put in you know, maybe two calls and <laughs> we, we couldn't execute those very well. We're we're now I mean there's still a lot of teaching to do, but there's a lot more refinement as opposed to brand new learning. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, the, the three new guys, they're, they're kind of bright-eyed and taking a sip out of a fire hydrant. <laughs> but uh, uh, the rest of the guys are, are handling things pretty well. Yeah. Luke, Luke mentioned, Luke mentioned um, even, even last year, as he, as he started to learn the system, it didn't make sense that he could speed up his game and kind of stop thinking. Did you see that last oh, year? Oh, absolutely. Maybe? You know, it would have been great to have him in the spring to see it because mm -hmm. uh, he was probably our most dependable lineman. Uh, you know, obviously James had a, had, had a great year, but, but Luke was just steady and, and, and maybe more of a surprise not having seen him in the spring. And when you, when you learn the package at first, you're thinking before you're reacting, you can't play like that. Uh, the more you can just play natural football, the more opportunities you have to, to make plays. And I, I, that's why I expect our entire defense to make a step up this year with all the guys we have coming back. When you guys were, were in the staff meeting or viewing tape of Lone before you offered him, what did you see that, that, that jumped out on tape? Well, he, he was a very dynamic, active player. He was a, he was a guy that was powerful, uh, a guy that was raw. He hadn't played a ton of football, you know, being, being from uh, Zealand, the other yeah. end of the world in New Zealand. Uh, but, but, you know, he came and learned, and so we thought, here's a guy that, that can add right away to our depth, who can compete for a position, because he's got some powerful, good, quick twitch, you know, he'll give us some third down value as well as being a, a decent first and second down guy for us. Now on the first depth chart that we saw, he was just kind of listed as sort of just general purpose D lineman, maybe <laughs> linebacker. Do you have any idea where he's going to? No, he's, he's going to be a defensive end for us, most likely, uh, depending on how, how big he grows to. <laughs> we're, we're looking at him as a defensive end right now.
talking with Chigi, he says that Lona is kind of like a big brother to him, even though they both came in at the same time. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> what, what what kind of what have you seen in terms of uh, in terms of the way he's interacted with the players just off the field? Well, I'll tell you, you know, he's a guy that's very personable. Uh, he's got a great story, you know, coming from New Zealand, and so I think guys just naturally are, are attracted to him. How's the crossover been with uh, you and Coach Tuioti, kind of coaching the outside linebackers? Do you like together like you did with Coach Adams last year? I, I, I love it. Uh, Coach Tuioti is extremely bright, and I think uh, this is this is the first time I've had this dynamic where we've had the outside backers and the D line meet together. We'll separate a little bit to, to go through coverage stuff, uh, but I think it's a great dynamic, especially with how much nickel we play versus base. You know, we, we bounce back and forth, and so our outside backers have got to be defensive ends uh, as well as outside linebackers. And Coach chuyote has got great experience in that. And, uh, you know, it, it's awesome getting a chance to meet together and, and hear the way he teaches things because I learn every day from, you know, the guys around us. Uh, you guys just announced uh, the, the addition uh, of, of, of another outside backer that's going to come. And if I'll talk a little right. bit about, uh, about, about what he's going to bring to you. Well, he, we're looking at him as, as more of a true outside linebacker. He's a Sam backer, a guy that played a hybrid position, you know, kind of a safety outside linebacker, you know, at, at College San Mateo. He's a guy who can run. Uh, you know, everybody in our league is, is you know, spread you know, for the most part. Yeah. You know, there, there's another team on the other side of the bay that doesn't do that a ton. Uh, but the rest of the league, you know, that, that you play against, we've got to have a guy that can match up on a slot and play in space. And I think he does that really, really well. Yet he's, he's got some physicality to him. We can bring him off an edge and he can set an edge. After two practices, what's your general feeling, your general impression? Oh, my, my general feeling is we've got a long way to go, uh, but I like where we're at. A year ago, I mean, we're just, you know, banging our heads thinking, is this ever going to get taught? Uh, our guys have a, a concept about what we're doing now. We've got a lot of work to do, uh, but it's neat coming back that second spring. Uh, you know, before you're talking about getting lined up for stretch and, you know, trying to get our fastball started. Uh, we, we mentioned it the other day, uh, we try to get 14 plays in, in in five minutes or less. And both days we've done it in four minutes and change. And the first time we did it a year ago, I think it took us about eight or nine minutes to, to do it, the same thing. Uh, those kind of, you know, uh, jumps that you make from a, pro, you know, from a process standpoint, guys understand how we practice, they understand the package, they understand how to adjust things. The more you can do that, the more they just play natural flow football. Yeah. Are there specific things you'd like to see from him this spring and taking that next step? Well, I think anytime you know, you've got a guy that's, that's played, who's got some ability like he does, um, I want to see not only his game elevate, but help see how he elevates guys around him. Uh, I thought Devontae did a great job of that last year. Uh, and to have Jordan back this year with experience, you know, Garen Brown will do the same thing. Both those guys in Evans. You know, they've played. I expect all those guys to understand what to do and help guys around them elevate their games. Thanks, Coach.